Hi everybody, it's Mr. Baton from the Union Campus in New Jersey. And, and today I just want to give you a little understanding of some of our basic lifts so you can start to understand how they operate. What I'm standing in front of is what we call asymmetrical lift. We have asymmetrical lift in the shop here and we also have symmetrical lifts. The two main differences between a symmetrical lift and an asymmetrical lift. On an asymmetrical lift, as you see here, the posts are pointed out. My front legs are shorter than the back legs. We position the car differently when lifting it on an asymmetrical versus a symmetrical lift. A symmetrical lift, as you see over here, the front legs and the rear legs are both the same size and my posts are not tilted in. When I lift the car on a symmetrical lift, I pretty much want to be in the center of the car versus on an asymmetrical lift, it's going to be more forward towards the front fender, which is kind of nice with the asymmetrical. It allows you to get in and out of the car very easily. All right. When setting the lift up, it's important that we understand that these legs are adjustable. They do pull out, and as you heard the stop, they can only go so far. All the legs move out. When we lift the car, it's important to have these legs on the car separated as far apart as possible to keep the car balanced. Now, in some applications, when we set a car up, we will use a regular flat lift point, like you see here. In other applications, what we have to do is to use this little step. If you see this car right over here, it has that little lower molding. And if I was to lift that with a flat pad, I can damage that. So what we do is we use this little step to, and we put it on what we call the double metal and it prevents any damage. Now here's a key. If I'm using this on this side, I also have to use it on the other side because it's really important that when you lift the car that it's perfectly level. You can't lift the car tilt into the front or back. It must be perfectly level. We also, in some applications, use a taller step, like so, on a body over frame vehicle, for example. If I was lifting a pickup truck, I would not want to lift it by the body, I would want to lift it by the frame. And therefore, we can use these tall steps. But it's important that when we use these steps, if we're using them in the front and in the back, that these legs are not aiming the same way. Because if they were, and somebody bumped the car from the back or front, the vehicle would basically fall. So one of the things we always teach you here at the school is when you're setting a car up like that, we have them opposed, like you see here. Now in the event the car was bumped, it would not fall onto the lift and do damage. So another important thing when lifting a vehicle is understanding how our lift works. All lifts have different controls. This lift here has a button right here on the side a small button. When I hit this button, it's going to activate the electric motor, which actually acts, which activates electric hydraulic pump. Start. When I when I hit this small button. Sorry about that. No so when I hit this button here, it activates the electric motor, which is a hydraulic pump, and my lift starts to rise. Now, when my lift comes off the ground you will notice that now the legs are locked and they cannot be moved. If I had to move them for whatever reason, you can lift and adjust it. But that should be done when the car is all the way down. Another thing's important, when using a lift, when you raise it to the point that you want to work on the vehicle, you always need to put it on the safeties. You're going to hear the safeties kick in any second. That is the safeties. As this vehicle goes up, there is mechanical locks that prevent the car from coming down. 
Once we hit the desired height where we want to work on the car, we're going to hit this lever. This lever releases the hydraulic pressure, and now there is no hydraulic pressure in my lift. It is mechanically locked. It cannot come down. It's safe to go under the car. After we're done working on the car, we can raise the vehicle to remove and get it off the safeties. Over here on the side, we have a release for the safeties. If I pull this release down, and now I release the pressure, my lift comes down. With no car on it, it goes relatively slow. Another thing to point out, all lifts are rated for weight. There's a weight capacity. You should never come even close to pushing any type of lift equipment to its capacity. Always leave a reserve. Also, all the lifts in our school, if you walk through, you'll see there's a certification on them. Our lifts are certified and they're all checked constantly to make sure lifts are in good condition. You know, it's a good idea to keep an eye on your lift if you're working in a shop. Make sure you don't have any hydraulic leaks. Another thing that's important too is keep an eye on your cables. These steel cables here go up over the top and come down. If one of those rollers sees up and this cable starts getting dragged across it, you'll see this cable start to fray. And if this cable starts to fray, your lift needs maintenance. These are things, just some of the basic things you need to keep an eye on. On the very top of the lift, you'll notice there's a bar. In the event that we had a van come in here and he had maybe some ladders on his roof, that's a safety. The minute it hits that bar, it's gonna shut the lift off so it does not crush. Now there's one more lift I wanna show you. And this used to be a wheel alignment machine, but we've kept it because it's very useful. This is a drive-on lift, which is really nice to have. Has a separate control panel over here. And you'll see, whenever using a lot of the same lift equipment, it's important that we always lift it up rest it on the safeties, do our task, lift it up, remove the safeties, and lower it. Here, all we need to do is turn it on, and as I hit the raise button, it's gonna raise the lift. What's very good about this lift, I like to show my students on this lift, you can hear that clicking noise. What that is, is that's the safeties. So if you pay attention right here, you're gonna see these teeth go up and I'm gonna lock the lift so you can really understand how these mechanical safeties work. So as I go up, you see I'm clicking. Now I'm at a desired height where I'm gonna work on the car. I'm gonna hit lower to release the hydraulic pressure in the lift. And now you'll see that that is mechanically locked. These teeth are mechanically locked, and now this lift cannot come down. The same thing is happening on the other lifts. It's just inside the tower, and you can't see it. Again, now that I'm ready to lower the car, and I'm done working on it, what I'm gonna have to do is come over, raise the lift, release my safeties by holding this button, You'll see the safeties now are raised so they will not catch. And now I can lower my lift. Now I'm not gonna lower it all the way because there's one more part on this lift I'd like to show you. These are called sliding bridge jacks. You're limited what you can do on a lift like this, a drive on scissor. But if you wanted it, to maybe take off the wheels to inspect the brakes, you can. We have a sliding bridge jack in the front and a sliding bridge jack in the back. Now, to operate these, I would move it under the rear axle. These also slide out so I can position them. The same rule applies. If I'm gonna lift this up to maybe catch a rear differential, all right? As you see, somebody's already set these up properly. 
they're opposing. If they were in the same direction, like so, that would be a problem. Because what would happen, maybe you're using a hammer on something on this end, and the vehicle shifts. If the vehicle shifts, my car falls. But if we stay with our little rule about opposing lift arms, even if this one falls, this one's gonna stop. Well, really, that one can't fall because this is gonna fight it. So it's important that we understand that. Now, once we positioned our legs, this one requires two hands. You're gonna take your two hands and apply pressure. This one happens to be air operated. As I apply pressure, it's gonna rise. Now again, here to safeties, this is a common thing on all lift equipment. You're gonna hear safeties. As they go up, that click is your safeties. Now I've hit my desired height, I'm gonna lower it and release all the air. Now there is no air, and now this lift is mechanically locked, it cannot fail. When I'm done working on the car, the next step I'm gonna take to lower it is, again, to rise it. And as I lift it and it comes up, now I'm gonna disengage the safeties, and then I am gonna lower it. and now the car vehicle is lowered. So I just wanted to give you a little understanding today on how lifts work, and we hope to see you at Lincoln Tech and Union soon. Everybody stay safe.